Hello and welcome to this update on our previous Radio Equipment Directive uh, Cyber Security uh, Requirements webinar. Um, this is a shorter webinar than we've previously done um, as we're just going to do a quick recap of what's happening uh, with the Radio Equipment Directive and those cyber security requirements as well as a, a, a quick refresh as well of some uh, uh, things that's happening around the world. Um, before we continue I'd just like to introduce myself, if you don't already know me. My name is Joe Lamarco, and I am the uh, Cybersecurity Lab Manager uh, in our IoT Cybersecurity uh, Lab in the UK. I'd also like to uh, um, let my colleague, John Lee, introduce himself as well. Hi, I'm John Lee. I'm the Certification Manager in the UK, um, and globally, I'm the RED Senior Product Specialist for TUFSUD. Great. So, um, as we continue, I will just give a quick recap, uh, or John and I should say, we'll give a quick recap of what's happening around the world with uh, cybersecurity uh, standards and regulations. So, this slide gives a, a, a quick uh, summary overview of what's happening in, around the world uh, with uh, global uh, IoT cybersecurity uh, regulations. I'm not going to go into any great detail. Uh, and all of these points on here, but I will look at the UK, EU and US uh, in the, uh, the next uh, few slides. But as you can see, countries such as Singapore and Brazil uh, are taking things uh, very, very seriously uh, and have uh, and are continuing to uh, uh, introduce uh, uh, legislation and regulations to ensure that uh, IoT devices that are placed on the, uh, the market uh, uh, within those countries uh, do have a good uh, level of cybersecurity health. And you can see as well, countries like China and Japan and India uh, also uh, have uh, some uh, cybersecurity regulation in place, uh, or certainly planning uh, cybersecurity regulation uh, in place. Uh, but uh, for the next few slides, I'm going to talk a little bit more detail about the EU, UK and USA. So the UK. In the UK, we have the Product Security and Telecommunications Infrastructure Bill, or the PSTI. Uh, in our previous uh, webinar, I think we were still on uh, the, or, or the bill was still at the House of uh, Commons stage, or the House of Lords stage, I should say. Um, but in uh, the last few weeks, uh, we've actually seen this uh, uh, PSTI uh, bill progress uh, to the final stages, uh, and it has now gone for royal assent. Um, I mean, we don't have a specific date when that will actually uh, come into play, but we do actually think it could probably be Q1 next year. But we will give uh, further updates uh, as and when we, uh, we hear news. The US. Uh, you might be aware that uh, two states, Oregon and California, have actually mandated uh, security or cybersecurity uh, protection of IoT devices. Uh, and I am uh, aware that other states are certainly considering the, this legislation and may follow suit in the not too distant future. They also, in the US, uh, brought out the IoT Cybersecurity Improvement Act, which basically uh, mandates NIST to uh, move forward and produce standards and guidelines for IOD, IoT devices that are going to be placed on the market, certainly from a federal requirement uh, initially, but we find that uh, federal requirements, when they take uh, uh, legislation on board that they, they does can tend to filter out into the uh, the public. So that's a, a whirlwind tour of what's happening uh, in uh, the UK and the US. But now I will pass on to my uh, colleague John, uh, who will uh, talk a little bit more about uh, the uh, Radio Equipment Directive in Europe. So yeah, so this is nothing new for a lot of people on this call. So the Radio Equipment Directive. Um, came into force in 2017 when it repealed fully the uh, RNTT directive. Um, one thing we need to consider from a cyber security perspective is radio equipment covers an awful lot of different categories of equipment. So um, it was a wide scope, as it were. Um, and one of the key points we always say on any of our webinars is that we're demonstrating compliance with all EU directives to essential requirements and not the standards. So, and it's a common um, question we have about absence of harmonized standards and stuff. 
you still need to demonstrate compliance to essential requirements even in the absence of harmonized standards. <coughs> So with respect to satisfying these um, essential requirements, people will probably be very aware of these RED requirements for health, EMC and radio requirements for 3.1a, 3.1b and 3.2. Um, what the RED also allows is delegated acts or delegated regulations, if you like, which can be invoked by the European Commission under Article 3.3. Um, for those uh, people who know, they, they, they may also be aware that the Article 3.3G requirements were actually became mandatory, for example, in the uh, 17th of March 2022. And so these are already in force. So this webinar is really covering these updates for Article 3.3D, E and F for this, this, these additional cybersecurity requirements. So the actual delegated act or regulation came out in the 12th of January 2022. Um, it splits up. So th this is the abbreviated version. The actual full text of the essential requirements is a bit longer than that. So 3.3D covers inter internet connected protection. So it actually talks about, from applicability perspective, direct and indirectly connected internet equ equipment. 3.3E is for privacy and 3.3F is for the protection of fraud. This is your, um, you know, banking apps and all the rest of it. The privacy protection bit, one thing we should say is that it also invokes requirements uh, specific to certain product character categories. So, for example, toys have specific requirements. So where a Bluetooth device may not be applicable if it was Bluetooth only. It is actually under 33E if it's a toy, for example. So there are specific requirements in the delegated regulation to consider. Um, as with all legislation coming in, it, um, everything comes into force after 20 days, and then there's a period of transition always. And, and in this case, it comes uh, mandatory on the 1st of August 2024. Um, just one thing to make clear about that. Uh, Legislation applies to individual products being placed on the more uh, on the market. So we'll cover that. We'll try and cover that a bit more in in a later slide. The bits that are out of scope. Um, so we, one of the questions we've had several times is on medical devices. So medical devices completely fall out of scope of all of the articles for so. Um, because uh, medical devices have their own legislation requirements. And for Articles 3, 3, E and F, <coughs> um, civil aviation, electronic uh, road toll systems and motor vehicles also fall outside the scope. So, you know, as an example, for a motor vehicle, 3, 3, D still applies, if that's clear. Um, one of the key things we need to mention is the standards request. Um, this was long awaited, very much overdue and caused a bit of a headache, to put it politely. <laughs> um, and so uh, the standards request is a, quite a key document. Again, standards request is nothing new. So people may be aware that there was actually a standards request for the entire RED way back when, 2015 odd which um, is still referenced to this day when they're generating standards, for example. So they are quite critical documents. One of the key things it's requested is there's going to be three harmonized standards generated by Sensenelec. Um, Etsy were excluded from these standards requests. Um, and also one of the key things you can use a standards request for in the absence of harmonized standards is looking at key items that will be expected to be in those harmonized standards as well as like a reference document. Um, and in this particular case, the M585 standards request has um, sections 2.1, 2.2 and 2.3, which helps with guidance about what would be expected for each of the articles. And now we will go on to some of the updates. So with respect to the updates, the, um, <clears throat> the, the timeline for the RED has slipped, as you can see. 
um, one of the key problems was the standards request has uh, slipped backwards. And then also the publication of the generic harmonized standards is, is, is slipping to the right as well. Joe, do you want to talk about SEND satellite <laughs> development? <clears throat> I will do. Um, so basically, uh, Senelec have been tasked to write uh, the standards, the cybersecurity standards for each of these uh, new uh, articles, D, E, and F. Um, it is uh, Senelec uh, JTC 13 Working Group 8, which is doing uh, the uh, the work uh, on this. And I can certainly say that the the work is uh, is is quite intensive presently because we do know there's a lot of work to do for the uh, specific dates uh, and we will um, uh, try and give updates uh, and you'll certainly see updates I guess on the uh, on, on the Senelec websites about how uh, standards writing is progressing so um, and you know I think there's a quick reminder here that the uh, the standards list or the, the mandate uh, 585 does actually say that there's to be a uh, um, like a, 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 a vote or the standards should be ready by September 2023. So we will we'll monitor that and uh, update accordingly. So just a brief note on the Cyber Security Resilience Act that may, many people may have uh, heard about. So there's draft text for this requirement. So this is an overall massive update. So the Cybersecurity Resilience Act from a European perspective covers everything. Um, so it won't be just the wired, wireless products covered under the RED, it will include all wired products and even includes things like artificial intelligence. Um, it's got a split of classes of products, so it takes into consideration the risk of the product basically. And so higher risk um, products will require more cybersecurity aspects. It's got the normal aspects of a big horizontal legislation and a, a similar to the uh, PSTI bill from a um, UK perspective. It's got penalties if, with failure to comply with it. Um, it also, you know, with respect to the RED, it will certainly um, work with the and enhance the RED cybersecurity requirements. There is a possibility that it could repeal it, but I, I think that's unlikely. They're, they're trying to map it so it smoothly runs into the, between the two. Um, being major horizontal cybersecurity legislation, we don't know when this is going to be released, though. Um, so let, now let's just move on to some questions. Okay, before we uh, continue uh, with the questions, uh, it's worthwhile uh, probably just uh, taking a, a few seconds to explain where these questions have come from. Uh, so we had uh, the previous uh, webinar, which went into uh, what we're you know what we're doing and uh, what's actually happening uh, within uh, Europe and the legislation. Uh, and these are some of the most common questions that we. Uh, have uh, experienced or been that have been posed to us. So uh, I think we have about five questions here. Um, so I'll uh, I'll bring each question up and then uh, John uh, will uh, uh, provide an answer for it. Um, it. Also, it's probably worthwhile saying at the end of this webinar there is a uh, uh, an email address info at tufsud which you can uh, send. Uh, um, Emails to to if you have any further uh, requirements and uh, or if any further questions uh, on what you've uh, what you've heard today. So uh, I think we asked question number one: um, if there are no harmonised standards going to be available by the first of August 2024, what can I test to? Yeah. So th this is um, first first point to make when the absence of harmonised standards in accordance with RED Article 17 you actually need to use a certification body to um, uh, certify products to Article 3.3 if there's no harmonised standards cited in the uh, REDOJ. In the absence of harmonised standards, you always look to what's available. So the obvious candidate is 303645 if it helps with that specific product. There will be deltas to the RED requirements. So key things to consider when you you know in the absence complete absence of drafts or anything is think about your risk assessments 
because always with European certification, you need to consider about risk assessments and uh, moving forwards, you need to consider, for example, what is the actual essential requirements applicability? And then of course, obviously um, use the standards request, for example, for additional guidance. But um, TIPSUD could certainly help with that as well. So the next question is, can I certify my products before the 1st of August 2024? Um, yes, you can. The actual cybersecurity delegated regulation applies from the 1st of August 2024. So a, a certification body would be expected to like release a certificate, but it would say um, this item applies from the 1st of August 2024 onwards. There's obviously a risk in um, early certification requirements because Sed and Sedelec are generating the standards and they could change while they're still being drafted. But you know, that's that's the, the risks go down as the, the standards become more stable. But again, we, we are working in that, on that in the background. Yeah, this is a frequently asked question that's come up before um, about a, a possibility of the delay uh, for the mandatory date of the 1st of August 2024. We don't know for sure because this is a European Commission decision. Um, previous history shows this as unlikely, but it has happened. So uh, legislation can be pushed back. Um, the, the recent example from an RED perspective, though, um, even in the absence of harmonised standards, they didn't push back, for example, on the Article 3.3G requirement. This is a normal, uh, frequently asked question about products being placed on the market. How do we ensure um, <clears throat> they are compliant to the RED cybersecurity requirements after that date? Do we need to do this? Yes, you do for the individual products that are being placed on the market. So if a product's already an individual product, not the product series, again, if we remember this terminology. <clears throat> so if the individual product has already been placed on the market, um, by that I mean with a distributor, for example, so it's already for sale in a shop, then legislation, you wouldn't be expected to update the legislation on that product if it's in a... Um, a shop in the European Union, for, for example, after import. But that same product series will still need to be updated to um, comply with the cybersecurity requirements after the 1st of August 2024 for subsequent imports of that individual product. Um, finally, I'll throw this one back at Joe. <laughs> How can Tufsud help me? Okay, so um, before I, I jump onto the next couple of slides, um, I would refer back to FAQ4 uh, um, about products that are already on the market. And um, certainly you know, manufacturers need to make sure that they have uh, designed in a good level of cyber security on their uh, you know, their products subsequently uh, after the 1st of August 2024. But uh, another challenge or, uh, does actually exist in that uh, manufacturers that are going to continue to market after that particular date have to ensure that they have a good level of cyber security designed into their products and if they haven't then they have to go back now that can be possibly uh, uh, very very difficult indeed uh, and possibly even impossible for some products uh, so that's something that manufacturers need to be doing uh, now is, is, is looking at their product and finding out exactly what the task uh, that lies ahead in um, getting their products uh, ready for, the, for that particular date. As John has already said, what can you do now? Or what must you do now? We, of course, spoke about the 303645 standard. Tuff Sud is a, is, a, is a company that is uh, well-versed on the standard and presently uh, providing uh, testing services on that. We do have other standards which could be uh, uh, could be used as um, and could be applied to, to help with the deltas, but we also have lots of experience with with manufacturers in cybersecurity as well, whereby we can uh, help them understand what deltas that they could uh, do, whether it be testing, whether it be information gathering, whether it be 
uh, you, know, you know, self-declaring or declaring that the product has certain things, we can help uh, them understand what level of, of, of cyber security they, they have in their products and whether it would certainly cover 303645. Um, but as time goes on, when we understand more about what's going to be in the standards, we can help uh, customers understand what how that might impact their products. And as I say before, standards are in development uh, and uh, going into 2023, it's hoped that we will have some kind of working draft uh, you know, halfway through the year, possibly a little bit later. The dates, you know, please don't quote me on that, but we are we're, we're quite hopeful there will be some good traction uh, on those particular standards. Uh, I mean, there are other things that that manufacturers can do. Uh, certainly, preparation is probably the number one point to take away from this webinar. Is start looking at your product today. Um, and, you know, as I say, understanding what level of cybersecurity is designed in and working out what uh, additional uh, things that you need to do to uh, to get ready. I mean, there are things like bespoke test plans um, that can be, uh, can be put in place, which are potentially over and above that required in 303645 and whatever comes out of the, uh, the standards committees. Um, there's also applying the principle of secure by design there are lots of organizations uh certainly globally but in the europe and uk um such as the ncsc uh they have these websites whereby they will give guidance uh, and there's some documents you can download which which helps you understand what secure by design is and that's simply is making sure security is built in from the beginning at the concept stage um, and uh, there's lots of good practices and good uh, organizations such as, uh, you know, as I say, the uh, NCSC and we also have uh, organizations, industry organizations such as the Open Connectivity Foundation. Uh, and, uh, well, there's plenty of information out there and if you don't know where to find it, please do contact us and we can put you, uh, uh, you know, in touch with certain uh, people or certainly direct you to the uh, uh, the relevant uh, information outlets. But I think, I mean, that basically sums up our uh, our webinar today. Uh, and I think the final words I wanted to say was, uh, you should start preparing now. Uh, and if you need any help, please do uh, drop us a line or give us a call uh, and we can uh, uh, help you on your cyber journey. And I, that concludes uh, this uh, webinar today. A short one, as I said. But we will be giving further uh, subsequent uh, updates uh, as and when we uh, we have new information uh, about what's happening uh, in industry and what's happening with the standards. So on that note, I would like to thank you for listening or thank you for watching and uh, bid you a good day. Thank you.